Hey guys, it's time for another update on the Gallic Wars. Now, if you've been following my videos, you'll know that the uh, the chaps over at Warlord Games kindly sent me a whole bunch of stuff for Caesar's Gallic Wars to have a look at, build how I wanted, and then get together to play some games. So in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I go about painting these Caesarian Romans that are produced by Warlord Games. Now, this is going to be essentially a basic video because the idea was that I wanted to paint these up quickly. Um, it, it's a very, very simple, straightforward method, a bit like the Gallic Warriors one. There's nothing groundbreaking here, but I had lots and lots of comments just asking what I'd done uh, to get them on the table so fast, and this is how I go about it. So, as you can see, after assembling the miniatures, I prime them uh, with white or with wraith bone here, which is uh, citadel paint. Now, as you can see, I have done a little bit of conversion work here on the Centurion. I've used an arm from an Imperial Roman Auxilia just to uh, to give them a bit of a different pose, and I've uh, actually converted a Pelum. If you have a look at my most recent update, I actually went into details about how I did that. So to kick things off, very similar to the Gallic Warriors, I deal with all the flesh areas first. And I'm using Darko Flesh, it's a contrast paint by Citadel, I use a lot of contrast paints. And I just liberally apply this all over the flesh areas. Um, it's a really good way of getting nice deep shades on there. The trick with it is to not let it pull too much, just slap it on, use your brush to take away any of the excess. And then when it's dried, all I do next is I grab a mid tone flesh tone so Kislev flesh if you're using the GW paints or barbarian flesh if you're using army painter and I just very simply do a quick dry brush over all of the areas um, that we've used the darko flesh from and that's it that's all I do for the flesh just to keep things simple now I'm going to use blood angels red to pick out the uh, sort of stereotypical red tunic here which I'm going to give to centurion but I'll give the other guy uh, sort of a white linen tunic just so there's a bit of color variation again I just put this on quite liberally and I try not to let it pull and we'll give this guy a nice red crest on his helmet now, as I say, the trick here is to not let it pull too much, but uh, if you do make any mistakes, you can easily just add some of the undercoat color again, so just some basic white, and then just take it off. Using the Citadel Paint Dreadful Visage, which has got a kind of a purpley, grayish color, which I quite like, I'm just simply cut color in all of the same spots um, that I did on the Centurion. Now, I really like this paint, but again, don't let it pull too much. Now next up I'm going to use snake bite leather and I'm going to paint all of the leather areas on both of the Roman figures. So the scabbard, the belts, the edges of the chainmail and I don't bother trying to pick out flesh parts um, on the sandals. I just go through the whole thing with snake bite leather. Next up, using Evil Sun Scarlet, it's just time to add a few highlights to uh, the areas of red, and I just go for the very, very tops the, um, of these areas, so the tops of a tunic, the tops of the uh, the crest, just the areas that would be getting those highlights. Evil Sun Scarlet is a really nice colour to pick these out. Now, in a similar way to what I've just done, I'm going to use the AK3G paint white to grey, and I'm just going to pick out the highlight areas uh, on this guy here. And that's where the dreadful facade was going. But while I had this out, I thought it would be fun to add some uh, some sort of you know stripes to this guy's crest to make him really stand out because he's going on a command base. So I wanted this guy's crest to be a bit a bit more special than just a standard red one. Once that's done, I'm going to use MIG Color Steel and just fill in all the areas of the chain mail. This is where you've got to be a little bit neater than you already have been because if you do make any mistakes, you'll have to go back over those with the original color. Um, but if you're nice and careful, then it shouldn't be too problematic. Once this is done and while I'm waiting for that to dry, I'm going to use Black Templar and I just use this on any models that have the uh, the plume. I snip a lot of these off, probably about half of them I snip off so that there's a, a bit of balance in the unit. Once that's all done, I use Army Painter Strong Tone and just liberally apply it over all the areas of armor, the crest, but I try to leave the areas of the tunic that we've already painted. And you need to put this aside to dry. It can take a little while, but um, while you're doing that, you can get on with the shields. Now, I've already undercoated these shields and done the metal work, um, so I'm just going to use Blood Angels Red to Contrast Paint to fill in around. Now, I'm going to be using the transfers that come in the Warlord game set, and they're not like the little big men onesies are traditional water slides so you need to paint the background color of your shields. 
So next up, I'm going to paint the bronze armor, and I use a more gold color. I use the Citadel color Retributor armor to do this, and I just undercoat the areas of the helmet, the uh, sort of pommel and hilt of the Gladius, and I just sort of thin this down slightly with a little bit of water, just so it flows a little bit easier, um, and then just set that aside to dry. I keep things simple when I'm working on the Pelum and I just use the contrast paint Agaros Dunes and just liberally apply that over all of the uh, sort of the woodwork for the Pelum and then just take off any excess. Um, next up while everything is drying I'm going to do uh, some strong tone over the shields now that that Blood Angel's red is dry and making sure that it goes all over that metalwork and again just taking off any excess. Um, this will take a little time to dry so it's back to uh, the Romans to carry on working on them and I'm going to use the contrast paint Gilliman Flesh. I always wash gold or bronze colours with this because I really like the tone it gives. So again, I just whack that all over the areas of the helmet and the hilts and that that I've already done with the Retributor armour. Now I like to give the shields a slightly sort of graded look, so I'm going to use Evil Sun Scarlet and I'm just going to, rather than dry brush it, I'm just going to stipple it over most of the areas that we've already done with the Blood Angels Red. And then once that's dry, I'm going to use the Citadel Colour Troll Slayer Orange and just come in and do the uh, sort of the areas closer to the centre and it just gives you this sort of nice overall washed effect. Using the Dark Star Bray Gold Colour, I'm going to just do a very, very small dry brush over the tops of the helmets just to sort of give the impression that the light is catching though, that bronze and shining off of it. I just pick out two contrast paints to do the hair, so I use Gore Grunt of Fur for this chap. And then for the other guy, I thought it would be fun just to use some Black Templar just to make him look different from the, uh, the guy that I've already done. You have to be a little bit careful when you're doing this because you don't want it to run into other areas, but if you're careful, then it shouldn't be much a problem and these guys are more or less done so now we need to get the shields finished so using the transfers that come in the plastic warlord set um, I just slice off the two that I need separate them um, and then pop them onto a piece of kitchen towel then I sprinkle water over them using a pipette and then just make sure that a little bit of the water sits on top of the transfer. Now I have to make sure that everything is fully dry uh, before I do this but I add micro set onto both of the shields while I'm waiting for those transfers to basically become movable. Once they are movable, I don't bother with brushes. I just peel them off with my fingers and I just pop them into place where they're needed. I don't really break any and if, if you're careful, it's just a bit quicker than sort of, you know, trying to do everything with a brush. Once those are in place, I use some Micro Sole um, and just paint that on so it sets nicely in position. And then when it's done, it should look something like this. Now to finish off the shields, I'm going to use some dark earth pigment and this is from AK, pop it on a piece of kitchen towel and I'm just going to do the very bottoms of the shields and using a soft brush and one that I only use for pigments, I think I liberated this from my wife's makeup bag, um, I just do the very very basis of the shields and then just push that colour around um, until it sort of gives it a nice worn and muddy effect and that's all I do, I don't bother fixing it in place with anything because they're going to be on a multi base and you're not really going to be touching the shields very much. Now, to attach them, I do it while they're still on the lollipop stick, so I just put a small blob of super glue um, on the hand and then just pop the shield where I want it, and it, you've got a few seconds to move it around before it sets. Now, these models I've painted up to be part of a command base for the man himself, for Julius Caesar, so I use one of these big red bat bases, um, and I decided that I wanted to basically just have everything prepared first. I knew I wanted Caesar in a slightly higher position because the model is ever so slightly smaller than um, these Roman soldiers uh, so I created a little bit of high ground for him and once he stuck onto the base it was time to remove these guys from their lollipop stick hit them with some matte varnish and then basically pr using a blob of super glue press them onto the base where I wanted them to go and I really like the idea that they're sort of you know jumping to Caesar's orders and ordering some men nearby and here we are, here is the final base, so you get to see a bit of Caesar's command base, but that's it, that's how I go about painting the Romans, and using that method I've managed to knock out the units very quickly, a unit of sort of 16 to 17 models only takes a couple of evenings to put together, the longest part of the process is probably the shields, but if you do them all at once you can probably get the whole, all of those shields done in about half an hour.
Now, these guys are the end of the first box of Romans that I've received, and I will be getting some more. I probably will be doing different shield designs from now on, but I will still be looking at converting more centurions like this guy here, because I feel like they almost embody the character of the unit. Now, as I said before, these paint jobs aren't competition winning paint jobs, but they are a way of getting the troops onto the battlefield fast, and I'm really pleased with them. For the amount of time that I've spent doing them, I think it's a, a decent trade-off between time and results and functionality. Anyway, I hope you guys found this useful. I know a lot of people have been asking um, for the Roman videos, and um, I apologise it's taken this long to get this one out, but I always wanted to do it for Caesar's command base, because this, as I say, is probably the last update before we're going to start having some games. Anyway, let me know what you guys think. I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you, as always, for watching, and thank you to Warlord Games for sending me the set so that I could work on these. Keep your eyes peeled for the battle reports, and I will see you guys again soon in the next one. One. Stay tuned for a few pictures, look after yourselves, bye bye!